1931, the Austrian logician Kurt Gödel published his incompleteness theorem, a result widely considered as one of the greatest intellectual achievements of modern times. The theorem states that in any reasonable mathematical system there will always be true statements that cannot be proved. His incompleteness theorems destroyed the search for a mathematical theory of everything. Nearly a century later, we're still coming to grips with the consequences. Logic and science are closely related in that they both involve the process of reasoning and the search for truth. Logic is the branch of philosophy concerned with the principles of correct reasoning and argumentation, while science is the systematic study of the natural world through observation and experimentation. In science, logical reasoning is used to make conclusions about the natural world based on empirical evidence. Scientists use logical reasoning to form hypotheses and theories, and to draw conclusions from their experiments and observations. For example, when a scientist observes that a certain chemical reaction occurs under certain conditions, he uses logical reasoning to assume that the reaction is caused by specific factors, such as the presence of certain chemicals or the application of heat. In both logic and science, the goal is to arrive at the most reasonable and convincing explanation of the evidence at hand. Both fields also rely on the principle of parsimony, which tells us to choose the simplest scientific explanation that fits the evidence. Logic and science are closely related, in that they both rely on rational thinking and evidence-based reasoning. Logic provides the framework for sound reasoning and argumentation, while science uses this framework to make conclusions about the natural world based on empirical evidence and mathematical models. A formal system is a set of rules and axioms that are used to generate a set of statements, or theorems, which can be proven or disproven based on the rules and axioms of the system itself. An axiom is a statement that is considered to be true, or a fact based on logic, however, it cannot be proven or demonstrated because it is simply considered by common logic as self-evident. In other words, axiom is the idea of being positive, or the concept of it is better to have it than not to have it. So it is a positive set. Is it better to be strong or weak? Is it better to exist or not to exist? Is it better to love or not to love? Is it better to be healthy or not? Is it better to be happy or not? So, an axiom is a statement that is considered to be true and positive, based on logic. An axiom is a true logic statement. A theorem, by definition, is a statement proven based on axioms, other theorems which are based on other axioms, and some set of logical connectives. A theorem is a true mathematical statement. Gödel's incompleteness theorems apply to any formal system that is powerful enough to express basic arithmetic, and that is consistent, meaning that it does not contain any contradictions. Something is positive or negative. It can't be positive and negative at the same time. In his proof, Gödel used a technique called diagonalization, which allows him to construct a statement within the formal system that refers to the system itself. The six axioms that Gödel used as the foundation of his formal system are Number 1. The axiom of extensionality. Sets are identical if and only if they have the same elements. This axiom states that two sets are the same if they contain the same elements and no more. So, we cannot have an element and its negation in the same set. If a set is positive, then its negation is not positive. This ensures that we can compare sets by their elements. For example, we have two sets of toys, set A and set B, and set A has a toy car, a toy train and a toy airplane. Set B has a toy airplane, a toy train and a toy car. Even though the toys are arranged differently, both sets have the same toys in them, so they are the same sets. 
In other words, imagine two sets of good behaviors, one set has helping others and being respectful, and the other set has helping others, and being kind. These two sets are the same because they have the same behaviors in them. So, we cannot have a set with an element positive and negative together in the same set. Number 2. The Axiom of Pairing For any sets A and B, there is a set AB whose only elements are A and B. This axiom states that for any two sets, there exists a set that contains only those two sets as its elements. For example, if we have two sets of toys, set A with a toy car and set B with a toy train, there is a set C that contains both A and B. In other words, imagine two sets of good behaviors, one set for kind behaviors and one set for honest behaviors. The axiom of pairing allows you to put both sets into a bigger set, and all the behaviors that were in the two smaller sets will still be good behaviors, even though they are in a new set. Number 3. The Axiom of Infinity There is a set that contains zero and the next inline number of every natural number. This axiom states that there exists a set that contains an infinite number of elements, including zero and all the natural numbers. For example, the set of all the natural numbers is an infinite set. In other words, imagine a set of good behaviors that can hold an infinite number of good behaviors, no matter how many good behaviors are added to it, it will always have room for more. Number 4. The Axiom of Regularity Every non-empty set has an element that is not a member, is disjoined of the set itself, because it has no element in common. This axiom states that every set, except the empty set, contains an element that is not a member of that set. In other words, imagine a set of good behaviors, that has at least one behavior in it, that is not related to any of the other behaviors in the set. Number 5. The Axiom of Replacement If a rule is given to replace one element of a set with another element, the resulting set will also be a set. Imagine example, you have a container with different good behaviors, and you want to make a new container of only the generous behaviors. The rule for generating this new container is to pick out all the generous behaviors from the container. Using the axiom of replacement, you can make a new container that contains only the degenerous behaviors from the original container. Number 6. The axiom of choice states that given any collection of non-empty sets, it is possible to make a choice of exactly one element from each set. For example, if we have a collection of non-empty sets of toys, like set A with a toy car, set B with a toy train and set C with a toy airplane, it is possible to make a choice of one toy from each set. Kurt in Gödel's incompleteness theorems are two theorems proven by Kurt Gödel in 1931 that have significant implications for the philosophy of mathematics, particularly in regards to the concept of mathematical truth. These theorems show that any formal system that is powerful enough to express basic arithmetic, cannot be both complete and stable. First Theorem The first incompleteness theorem states that any consistent formal system that is powerful enough to express basic arithmetic must contain statements that are true but unprovable within the system. Second Theorem The second incompleteness theorem states that if the formal system is consistent, it cannot prove its own consistency. This statement, known as the Gödel sentence, is a self-referential statement that asserts that, it is not provable within the system. Because the formal system is assumed to be consistent, the Gödel sentence must be either true or false. But if it's true, then it's unprovable, and if it's false, then the formal system contains a contradiction. Gödel's incompleteness theorems, also have implications for the study of formal systems, such as logic and computer science. 
They demonstrate that any formal system that is powerful enough to express basic arithmetic must contain unprovable statements, and thus it is impossible to create a formal system that is both complete and consistent. These theorems have been used to argue against the idea of artificial intelligence, as they suggest that it is impossible to create a computer program that can completely understand and model reality. Gödel's incompleteness theorems and quantum chaos theory are two separate areas of study that are not directly related. However, they share a common thread in their implications for our understanding of reality, and the limits of our ability to model and predict certain systems. These two theories demonstrate that there are inherent complexities and limitations in our understanding of certain systems, and challenge traditional beliefs about the nature of mathematical truth and the predictability of quantum systems. As fractals have a recursive, self-similar structure that is similar to the idea of incompleteness in formal systems. While there is not a direct connection between Gödel's incompleteness theorems and fractals, there are certain areas of mathematics and physics that involve both concepts, and the idea of fractals have been used as a tool to understand the nature of mathematical truth and incompleteness in formal systems and the study of chaos theory, which is related to quantum chaos. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.